Welcome to The Near Memo, a weekly conversation about search, social, and commerce. What happened, why it matters, and the implications for local. But, and it's very convenient, but this is exactly why we have antitrust. Yeah, Yeah, so, so, so what's interesting about your experience is that it was a terrific experience. The Amazon experience is a terrific experience from a consumer standpoint. But what the what the uh, Europeans and the um, House of Representatives want to do is really break down the gatekeeper role that uh, that Facebook, Google, Apple, and um, uh, Amazon, Amazon, yes, are are playing. They they want they want third parties to be able to break into these systems, these these walled gardens, or these very heavily controlled environments, and and be able to break through to the consumer. But the the irony of that, I mean, so for example, in uh, Tim Tim Cook, the Apple CEO, was complaining that the the Digital Markets Act, I think, is what it's called in Europe, which has been proposed, would um, compel Apple to allow side load, loading um, to break through that gatekeeper role. Um, but what we have here is sort of a paradox: the best consumer experience is provided, arguably, by the monopolistic practice. Whereas that's harmful to the ecosystem of businesses, um, but if you fragment, you know, if you allow sort of for the multi multiple parties in this uh, value chain, then it's, it makes for a fragmented or more difficult uh, consumer experience. Right, and the question becomes: which products shouldn't become features in a platform? I mean, historically, like I think that Benedict Evans maybe said this that. Originally, you had to buy the TCP IP stack separately from Windows when you bought a networking card. It wasn't integrated into Windows. And it it obviously became integrated. And it's no different with this, right? So by integrating these products and making them features, you get a much better user experience. Um, I I think to me, that type of bill might really limit some of the innovation we see. I think that the bill that prevents or makes it greater scrutiny when they're buying up competitors uh, to me is is a better better way to approach this than than to dictate what they can and can't do on their Well, uh, historically, at least in the United States, the antitrust standard has been consumer harm. So you have to prove Mm -hmm. the burden has been on the government who's seeking to block the, the merger or the acquisition or the intended action. Um, or, or break up the company, I guess. And the the standard has been, is the behavior in question harming consumers in some way? And Google has always argued, uh, no, nothing that we're doing is harming consumers. We're doing things that are benefiting consumers. And in a certain sense, they're exactly right. Because what you're describing is a much better experience than uh, you know clicking through to a Burger King website and then having to do that you know, it, it, it's it's a much more kludgy thing if you have multiple parties. But the winds are changing. The new head of the chairperson of the FTC made her career. She's very young, but she made her career looking at the broader question of how these monopolies impact culture and society and business innovation and consumers. Um, and she's not a believer in the Bork theory right. of consumer harm. And and some of these bills clearly are trying to create a legal framework in which the FTC can consider other harms beyond consumer harm when they're making this analysis. But it is it is very interesting to think about um, to th- to think about the sort of tension between the consumer experience and the broader health of the ecosystem. I mean that may be a false dichotomy. But it doesn't seem that way, at least through the lens of your Burger King or your Chicken Mc. Not, I was going to say Chicken McNuggets, but what do they call them? What do they call them at Burger King? Uh, Ro- Royale with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, syn- synthetic chicken. But they, but they were chicken good. nodules. <laughs> <laughs> chicken nuggets. That's what all right. They call them. So, um, so, so. Uh, in the in the sort of vein of mergers and acquisitions, uh, this week also um, the company I work for, Uberall, acquired uh, one of its partner slash potential competitors, 
Moment Feed, a North American based company that did, does listings management and reputation and social media and has, has an ad product and some other stuff. Um, and, you know, it was, it was uh, on the heels of Moz being acquired by an email company. Um, Rio SEO was rolled up as part of another transaction by the, by the, by the firm that now owns doctor.com, I believe. And there are Press yeah, Gainey. a company I'd never, a com- company industry. I'd never heard of. Um, and then, and but they're, they're very big in the medical field, which is interesting because it's not clear to me they're going to hang on to real. Well, it's, it's, it's a, it's a marketing, it's a marketing tool for their healthcare providers, theoretically, right? They can. Well, so Rio got, well, Rio got acquired by, a company and that company oh, was, was then doing acquired. medical marketing was then acquired and Rio's been left as an independent. Oh, so that entity. suggests that they might so be the, spun out. It's, they may or be sold spun out, to so sold to somebody, actually, right? Right. But and the other the other big trend, you know, we know that Sochi raised eighty million dollars in January with the express purpose of acquisitions. That's what right. they said. So in they're the, they're in, likely in to. Their, we 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 know of some rumors in that department as well. And so it's 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 likely that there are at least one or two other uh, acquisitions like this that will uh, occur in the in the immediate immediate period. So the question becomes: and Andrew Shotland wrote a piece um, about consolidation in the local space, uh, and his thesis. Well, he he was arguing that it just took a little bit longer than he anticipated, and he thought there would be a lot more of it right immediately on the heels of the X IPO. But it's taken four right. years for there to be some momentum. And to some extent, I think the X, you know, one, they, his, his other thesis is that it, it's driven by the X IPO, which was very lucrative and other people, and driven by the current valuations of like Sam Rush uh, on the stock market and a desire to get to the scale in terms of and have the multiples that would warrant an IPO. Uh, having enough marketing in the marketing space, right? So look, it, it demonstrates to me a couple of things. This is something you once said about spam, demonstrating the legitimacy of local. Now capital is demonstrating the legitimacy of local that they perceive it as a critical part of the marketing stack. And it's going to be rolled up into uh, larger companies that integrate it with social, integrate it with website building. Whoa. Uh, for enterprise. Well, there's a couple of interesting interesting points there. One is that, um, I mean, I can tell you the rationale behind the the acquisition. It was to to help the company, to help Uberall expand into North America. There was already a well- you know, does, Right. The question on that, though, does it put them in direct contact? Uh, uh, direct? Uh, is there channel conflict as a result? Because Moment Feed is like a brandify. I mean, they sell directly and now- Ubra, which wanted to become sort of a wholesaler of listings like they were for Moz, is now perhaps in in direct conflict with some of their clients. Maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not the. Uh, just say, just say and don't mean to no, put you no, on the spot. I'm, I'm not the. Oops. I'm not the. Uh, I'm not the sales guy. Um, uh, yes, there's a perception. I think that th- th- that there will be a perception among some people that there's that there's some channel conflict. Um, but thankfully, I'm not involved in those conversations. Uh, but but sort of expanding directly into North America and then filling in blanks in the, in the product suite was another one, right? So they had a, so Uberall had this product roadmap that had a number of pieces that had yet to be built out. The core product was was listings management, then reputation. They had store locators and uh, landing pages, and they were and they were sort of working toward a number of other things. And Moment Feed has some very complementary capabilities. Um, and Moment Feed is an existing Uberall partner, so there's already an integration. Uh, but but it raises this question of 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 what space is this? You know, one of the things that that we I think as an industry, to the extent that we can call ourselves that, have struggled with is definitions. I mean, we can use the word local, but nobody has you know local is is a much 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 many times larger deal than e-commerce, but yet it has never gotten sort of the Rodney Dangerfield of digital marketing. It's never gotten the respect that it deserves because people have failed to really understand and see it clearly. And now you're saying, I think some some of that is going on, but it's still, you know, I, I, th- there's an internal struggle at Uber all around, around messaging and branding um, w- with people wanting to use omni-channel and wanting to use language that has historically been more appealing to 
brands because brands often, you know, these multi-location brands often don't see themselves in this local discussion, right? I mean, they, they, even though they are, oh, they absolutely are. They get, and as my experience demonstrated, it's all local, hundred percent. Ultimately, right. It was a brand search that surfaced a local Burger King that then delivered. But you're, an but order you're not ordering right? from the corporate headquarters or the, some no. corporate amorphous in the cloud thing. You're ordering from a local right. restaurant being delivered by a, a exactly. local, you know, service. Yeah, I mean, one of the other arguments in Andrew's article is that this is listing management, and while everybody says they do these other things, listing management is still the core sort of money generator uh, because it's perceived by enterprises as one of the more difficult tasks that they have. I don't know why, but keeping track of their locations. It's, it's, it's very, I think it's very challenging for many. And, you know, the, the irony is that on the very low end of the market, there's very small businesses, you need a very high touch service, a lot of hand holding, a lot of, a lot of do it for me kind of uh, activity. And that's also sort of true at the, at the highest end. Right in the middle, there's right. a lot of self service and there's a lot of in house activity and you know, uh, but but at the at the highest end, at the very you know at the Starbucks level, um, you you still people people then demand a very high degree of service there, and and they have trouble internally, organizationally, operationally managing review local reviews at scale, business location data. They for whatever reason, it's it's not in their operational DNA to do that, so they do need to outsource that. Um, and some people outsource listings management as a way to keep track of their business data that they should have completely organized in house. But right, yeah, it becomes. It be, the, I mean, Yaxt or Uber all becomes the canonical yes, source precisely. for business data that then feeds Google, feeds Facebook, feeds the corporate website um, because it is for whatever reason the comings and goings are difficult to keep. Pre- track. Precisely, I, I, I would, I would. Par- Mostly agree with Andrew that the that the cash cow has been listings, but I don't think that that's uh, entirely true. And I do think that the market is moving away from that toward a more, more holistic offering. And you know, right. this is partly why Uberall bought Moment Feed is to build that out more more rapidly. And you've got you know, as we were talking about with Wix and and uh, and uh, Stripe, you know, everybody in one form or another is expanding the range of services that they're offering. You know, they have a core proposition and they're building out from that. Is there any irony in the fact that Shopify and Wix and Stripe are all doing the same thing Apple and Google or Amazon are doing? Is building more features into their products so that it's more convenient and easier to Well, do? there's a there's a logic. I mean, there's a logic there, obviously. And and right. once and exactly. they get customer feedback. Hey, it would be great if you did this and this and this. Right. And once you get to a certain scale, you can start moving into finance because you have enough credit cards on file, which Shopify is doing, right? One of the right. big uh, P and L lines is finance, and 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 Square that does that as well. The, right. the 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 thing about these antitrust bills is that they have a kind of uh, revenue threshold or other comparable thresholds that have to be met before before they would kick in. So yes, they clearly are meant to target the the, the big the, the big ones, the big big ones. Although I read an article that they likely sooner or later Visa will fall under the guise. Yep. Microsoft probably already does, which would be a great irony because I know Microsoft's probably been behind the scenes yep. cheering this effort yep. on very strongly. It'd be tremendously ironic if they were hit by it as well. But I mean, uh, if if they're if but, if these are if these are I mean, in an ideal world, you would have legislators that would devise neutral principles that were designed to benefit uh, the the economy as a whole and not simply be a, a targeting of specific companies, even though that's what's inspired right. it. Uh, yes. It's a complicated world, and I don't, you know, I mean, it's going to be interesting because to to some extent, consumers are not the focus, even though it's stated that they are, it is they are often not the focus of antitrust actions. Frequently, it's like the sumo wrestlers, the big corporations aligning against Absolutely. each other to see who can who can disadvantage the other the most through this because they've Lost out. In well, some the, the consumer is, is is rarely or if ever, as you say, behind any of these complaints that then generate the legislation or the or the regulatory right. behavior. It's it's a competitor who's been disadvantaged, who's looking to government to address their competitive dis- disadvantage in the marketplace, rightly or wrongly. Right. And and one of the one of the challenges with a lot of the shopping competitors in Europe to Google that were co- complaining so vigorously. I know we're we're almost out of time here. 
uh, against Google's control of shopping in Europe um, and, and maps also, uh, some of those companies had shitty products. Those products were just bad. And so it was, it, it's murky, you know, is, is Google winning because it's got control of everything end to end? Or is it winning because it has the better product and these competitive products are crappy? I mean, both are sort of true, you know? That's right. It makes it incredibly complicated and difficult to even parse these many bills. I, I think I'm going to wait for you to write. Well, I, you know, I am, I am, about. I am wanting to write something about that. I mean, my time has been in short supply. There is a good piece um, um, uh, that I link to in the short takes that um, um, Ben was was it yes, Sir Techery? Sir Techery, um has has yes. written that that kind of unpacks each of the bills and and talks about them in a pretty thoughtful way. That's a really good piece, uh, and I would recommend that. But on that note, we're out of time. We missed David this week, but we still had, a, I think, a pretty interesting conversation. Should we even invite him back? This was actually a pretty good conversation. <laughs> well, I hear you're going to go on vacation. Well, so that so yeah, I am. Maybe. I'm going to be out um, the around. I'm taking a couple of days off around the July Fourth holiday, so I will probably miss one of those. Uh, probably miss the whatever the Friday is before the the holiday. I don't know if that's the third or whatever. So, well. Have a good yes, weekend. everybody. Uh, enjoy your weekend. And you uh, if you're in one of the western states where it's really hot, uh, stay cool. Um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining David, Mike, and Greg. To stay on top of the latest developments in local, subscribe to our newsletter at nearmedia.co. We'll see you next week.